Hello, and welcome to this ARC Equalaws 500 webinar. I'm Christelle Valentine, ARC Product Manager for the Equalaws 500, which is a self-contained system that measures water level and temperature, stores the data to a built-in data logger, and also provides remote transmission using GPRS GSM. Over the next 20 minutes, we're going to review water level monitoring trends We'll take a deeper look at the EcoLodge 500 self-contained system, review installation options and examples, and look at some of the specific details behind remote data transmission and how to set it up using the water logger operating program. Water level monitoring trends have changed over time for both surface and groundwater monitoring. Years ago, many of the sites were monitored yearly or quarterly for groundwater, and over time, there's been a greater need for continuous logs of water level data. So instrumentation has been put down low to record water level on a more regular frequency. More recently, we've seen trends that have changed where there's a need for real-time transmission or near real-time transmission of these recorded water level values. Typical sites have often included an above-ground protective housing that includes a battery, solar panels, a data logger, a modem for cellular communication, or a transmitter for satellite communication, or even radio. With the Ecolog 500, it offers an in-well self-contained system. So the data logger, the battery, the modem is all included in the self-contained system, which then puts in a two-inch well. And this can help minimize the upfront installation costs and long-term maintenance costs. And it provides remote communication, so it transmits the water level data from the field site using GSM or GPRS communication. This is an ideal system for both surface and groundwater monitoring because it's simple to set up and provides real-time data or near real-time data. Taking a, another look at continuous level measurements and some of the goals that we're trying to achieve. So again, starting down in the left corner of the screen, we're looking at increasing the frequency of measurements. So not only storing those measurements more often to the built-in data logger, but also retrieving those measurements from the field site without having to go to the field site more often. And we're also looking to minimize the installation and troubleshooting time. And we can do this in several ways. With minimizing the installation time, this can be achieved by having a simple setup. So with the Equalog 500, we have a complete self-contained system where there's no civil works that are required. It simply fits in a two-inch pipe or a two-inch well. So it really provides a flexible installation. Also, with minimizing the troubleshooting time, having a reliable measurement instrument reduces the likelihood that you're going to have data gaps or that you're going to have any sort of measurement downtime. Measurement downtime has, um, with other technologies, has often been related to corrosion resistance. So having a robust instrument um, really does go a long way to helping minimize the likelihood that you're going to have any sort of these um, unplanned um, occurrences out at your site, which can increase the amount of time that you're having to work with uh, the instrument or the data or the application. So the data that's recorded on the Ecolog 500 is transmitted using GSM or GPRS, which is a cellular technology. And the transmission of data reduces um, ultimately long-term operation and maintenance costs because you're decreasing the number of site visits and with the information that's coming from your monitoring site, you have 
such things as low battery warnings or status messages. So it allows you to better plan when you need to go out to your site uh, to maintenance and can reduce in the long term the amount of site visits. They're also getting real-time data or near real-time data and you have a reliable communication method for obtaining that data on a regular frequency. And um, two-way communication, so you can also interface from the uh, office back out to the site. So now, once the data is being transmitted from the remote monitoring site and received back at the office, uh, this whole process is using several different one of many different protocols, you can use SMS messaging, which is essentially text messages. It's a short message service, or you can use email, FTP, or HTTP to get the data back to the office. And later on, we'll, um, we'll go into more detail about how exactly that's done and what some of the options are and what's required on the back end. But in, in summary, having the data back at the office um, it really simplifies the overall data handling process because you're getting it back uh, directly to, in many cases, directly to the PC where you're going to perform the analysis. And this can in turn minimize some compatibility issues that you might run into with um, various software programs. It also um, minimizes a lot of the post-processing that can occur with data, especially in the case of the ecolog with it being an event of pressure probe. And um, again, with the, the transmission of the additional information coming direct from the site, you're increasing the likelihood that you'll be able to identify a problem out of the site without actually physically being there. So now we'll um, spend some time reviewing the product itself. We'll get ourselves familiar with the product. So the EcoLog 500 um, was designed for both groundwater and surface water level applications. And it's ideal for these applications because it has a ceramic capacitive pressure sensor. So this is a real robust and accurate pressure sensor that provides measurements with long-term stability. The system also has um, capabilities to be installed for long periods of time. And this is um, one of the ways that this is accomplished is with having a lithium battery option. So there's power that's available for a long period of time. And we'll take a look at an example of this in a few slides. The system also provides automatic compensation. So an example of this would be your barometric pressure compensation. And finally, having um, data that's available remotely, so back at the office without having to go to the site. The EcoLog 500, um, I mentioned that it does have the ceramic pressure cell. In this lower photo, there's an example. You can see that the black cap has been removed off of the um, pressure probe itself. So you have the pressure cell um, right there at the tip of the pressure probe. And it's highly resistant to any sort of mechanical impact. So unlike your piezo-resistive strain gauges, um, you can clean this pressure sensor. Um, you can touch it. It's not going to be damaged if you lower it into the water very quickly. Venting the uh, pressure cell is a capillary tube that runs up the communication cable and into the communication unit. Um, in addition to compensating for barometric pressure, the EcoLog 500 also has temperature compensations and a compensation for gravitational acceleration. The batteries are um, included inside the unit, so in that upper portion that has the yellow and white label, and they're field replaceable. That ceramic pressure cell that we've been talking about has an accuracy of plus or minus 0.05% over the full scale. So what that means is uh, if we had a pressure cell that had a measurement range of zero to four meters, that means that the accuracy is plus or minus 0.01 foot over the zero to four meter range. So that's how one of the ways we can interpret that specification. 
Uh, in addition to a 4-meter measurement range, we have a 10, 20, 40, and 100. The diameter of the system is designed such that it will go in a two-inch um, well or uh, pipe. And the probe end of it, so this metallic end, has a diameter that would fit in a one-inch, and then the um, upper portion has a diameter that would go um, down the two-inch. The communication interface that's used for local um, setup, so if I want to take my PC, um, to set up the device or to download data um, directly, I would be using a USB um, cable that's connected to an optical reading head using the infrared um, communication interface. The vented cable um, has a Kevlar core inside to minimize uh, stretching over long periods of time. And the maximum cable length for the Ecolog 600 is 656 One of the um, advantages of this system and being a self-contained system is that it does have very low power consumption with 30 microns. So looking at um, the components in a little bit more detail here, we'll start up in the upper corner. Then we have the ceramic pressure cell. Um, here, labeled as number two, we have the sensor and the analog electronics. Um, this is where the data logger is built in. So we have um, a 20-bit um, A to D converter and a 4-megabyte um, data logger that has uh, four, 4 megabytes of memory. And then we have the cable, which is connected to the sensor. It is a potted cable, so it's... Um, eliminates the possibility of water ingress even over years and years of installation. And then um, denoted by the number four here, we have um, the stainless steel housing, which is um, a high-grade stainless steel. The 904L is um, a real robust stainless steel that's resistant to even saline water. So it really is a higher grade than the typical 316 stainless steel that's commonly available. The upper portion, the communication unit, is completely field maintainable. So if you think about how this unit would be installed, it's this communication unit that's going to be installed and available at the top of the well. And this is where the batteries are located. So you can have a lithium or alkaline battery option that um, easily connects here. You have the um, SIM card slot, and you also have um, the desiccant for the electronics, and then the desiccant that's attached to that vent tube. For exchanging the batteries, I mentioned that there's a simple connector. One of the nice things about this product is that you can, um, if you went with an alkaline battery option and you wanted to go to a, a lithium, you could easily do that. There's an alkaline uh, battery holder that houses the two C cells. So if you needed that option to have um, batteries that you could purchase at a local um, a local store, you can go that route or with the lithium battery. Um, just to give you some examples with the um, – if you had a one-hour measurement interval and you were logging, let's say, water level, temperature, and battery voltage, and you were transmitting those measurements daily, the alkaline batteries – would um, provide approximately um, 2.3 years worth of battery life, and that's assuming um, temperature at about 20 degrees Celsius. Now, let's compare that 2.3 years to the lithium, which um, could provide 3.8 years, and that's also assuming a 20 degrees temperature, 20 degrees Celsius temperature. Um, I mentioned the, the SIM card. Um, so the SIM card is what provides the service plan for the cellular communication. So we're using GSM, GPRS communication. Um, service providers in the U.S. are commonly AT&T and T-Mobile, whereas Verizon would be on the CDMA. So that's, um, that's a different, um, different type of cellular um, system, different type of cellular plan. Um, to give you an idea, um, 
the type of plan that would be required, of course, is dependent on the amount of data that is being transmitted uh, from the site. So not only the amount of data, but the, the frequency of data. But in general, plans that are two to four megabytes of data per month is more than sufficient for the majority of the applications. And depending on the contracts that are negotiated with the cellular provider, those plans can be as inexpensive as you know, eight to twelve dollars per month. Again, it depends on the specifics about your application, but just to give to paint a rough picture of what um, of what's involved with those SIM cards. Okay, so now uh, moving into the installation options. Um, wanted to review several different options. Um, every site is unique. And um, the what we'll discuss here is to um, help provide some ideas about possibilities and to highlight some of the um, major um, things that need to be considered. So what needs to be considered is the GSM or GPRS, the signal strength. So We've listed here that for GSM communication, you want to have a signal strength that's around 10, and for GPRS, around, um, above 14. So if you have a groundwater installation and you have a metal pipe, you need to ensure that somehow the signal is going to get out of the metal pipe. And if you have it complete, if you have the top cap completely closed such that it's an airtight or near airtight um, seal, the likelihood that the signal is going to get out is well, it's likely not going to. So in that case, you have to look at um, some different installation options where you would um, combine the ecolog with an external antenna. Um, it's also um, possible if, if you drill holes um, in the well to allow the signal to escape, and it might not be the well that you drill holes. It could be the top cap or... Um, in the case of the middle example here, we have a plastic top cap that then has a metal enclosure around it, so you may be drilling the hole perhaps um, in the metal enclosure, or if there's enough gap in that metal enclosure, it might be able to get out. Um, another, um, if you have a well that's a, a metal well pipe out in the open, like this example here on the left, um, another uh, great way to ensure you have adequate signal strength is to use um, a plastic top cap or a plastic well extension. Um, for many of the applications, especially for groundwater monitoring, you may have a situation where um, the well is in a parking lot, for example. So there is an additional option that we have where you can use an external antenna that's designed to go underneath manhole covers. Um, another common installation is having a well that um, encased in an irrigation box, and then you can either drill holes in the irrigation box or use um, one of these um, other antennas that's designed for underneath manhole covers. Here's um, an example of the connection of this external antenna. Um, the sub-antenna is designed such that it doesn't require any tools to remove, and you can then um, fix the external antenna directly onto the device. And here in this photograph, you'll see that the external antenna has been installed on the top of this um, drilling well. And the external um, antenna, there's varying cable lengths anywhere between um, 0.5 meters and all the way up to, to 5 meters. I wanted to share with you some additional examples of installation options. And um, kind of going back to the monitoring trends, you can see that several of these housings likely had chart recorders in them at one time and were monitoring water level inside a filling well. Here we have uh, have installations where the Ecolog 500 is now uh, measuring water level and temperature, collecting that data and transmitting it remotely. In the example on the left, you can see that there's an uh, external antenna that's been brought outside of this protected housing. And similarly, for the photograph in the middle, as you can see the ecolog um, has an antenna brought out um, outside of that metal protected housing as well. And on the top, we have another example of a, a groundwater, um, a large groundwater well where you have an external antenna again.
So now let's talk more about the remote data acquisition. Um, with remote data collection, you have, um, in this particular scenario, you have your monitoring sites that are um, located independent of the receiver. Um, these sites are capable of sending um, alarms if threshold values are met. So, for example, if you have a water level um, threshold that's been set and it's achieved, um, the device will send out an alarm message um, back to the main station, uh, notifying you that there's been an alarm and that condition has been met. Similarly, if there's um, low batteries, um, there's a warning message that's sent, and the sensor status codes um, are also available with each transmission. And this will give you an idea about the status of the measurement system itself and give you diagnostic codes if there are any um, challenges occurring out of that site. With this um, setup, you can have multiple stations um, that are transmitting data simultaneously back to um, back to the main server. Um, this uh, is an extremely cost-effective solution for uh, remote sites, and then you have um, networks like we've shown here. So revealing some of the main features of the Ecolog 500, there are um, two possibilities for um, remote communication of data. You have the first, which is an interval setting, where the frequency in which you want the data logger to push the data out. So you can set it to send data as frequent as every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes, it's going to send the parameters that you select remotely back to you in the office. Or you can set it up such that you have time slot driven communication where you define open windows when you can, from your computer back in your office, dial into the ecolog and acquire the data. The ECOLOG is using um, either SMS transmission of data to a PC. That's where it's sending essentially text messages. And in that case, the receiver PC would have a receiver modem and receiver software that would retrieve that information or bring that information in and then um, automatically transfer it over to a database. Now, in the case of the GTRS data transmission, there's um, three different protocols that can be used. There's the FTP, the file transfer protocol, SMTP, which is email, or the HTTP, which is essentially what we use on the World Wide Web. And you can have the SMS messages that um, are sending these alarms that we had talked about if a threshold value is met. Um, those messages can be sent to um, a cell phone. Um, to a PC that has the receiver software on it and receiver modem, or they can also be sent via email. So now we'll take um, another look at how the remote data transmission um, works and some of the various options. So we have, we'll start with FTP, which is on the top, the file transfer protocol. Here again, we're using the GPRS communication in which the data is being sent using the file transfer protocol and being sent to a server. In this case, it could be your server. So the data is sent to your server, and we'll go through an example here in just a few minutes of how that would be set up and some of the information that's required to input into the device. It can also be sent um, using HTTP. In the case of HTTP, you can um, transmit data using the HTTP protocol to an online software such as the Otnet V software that allows you to view the data online both in a tabular and graphic format and allows you to access it anywhere you can get on the internet and um, allows you also to um, have access there online to then download the data. And finally, there is the SMTP, which is where the data from the site would be transmitted um, using email. So then you could have um, 
those emails coming into your inbox. Um, in some cases, we've seen end users who have um, defined scripts where uh, the script is then going through the email and pulling that data and bringing it into a database. Just to give you some examples of some of the various options that are available. Okay, so now I wanted to um, briefly go over uh, a few of the setup options and dive into the FTP setup in just a little bit more detail. So this is the OTT Water Logger Operating Program, and for those of you who are familiar with the OTT OPS Mini and OTT CTD, um, it's also used with the new OTT EcoLogs 500. So to set up a device, we simply go to Setup, and it brings us into the main um, screen of the software, and here is where you enter the basic information about your system. So you have your site number, your site name, and your parameter information, so water level and temperature. And um, in the case of monitoring groundwater, you have your measurement type set to water level and then depth, and here's where we're looking at depth to water. In the case of surface water, we would change the depth over to water level. You can also enter in your measured reference values. So if it was surface water, you would look out at your staff gauge or your wire plate reading and enter that reading into the um, open field. You can set your sample interval and your storage interval. And similarly for temperature, you set your sample interval and your storage interval. To set up the modem inside the Equalog, uh, first you have the modem connected, and in this case we're going to be doing an FTP example, so we'll take a look at um, the GPRS data transmission being active. So I'll go ahead now and we'll take a look at that, the settings for FTP. So in our general um, tab here for the communication interface using GPRS data, we have um, first defined what our cycle time is, and this is basically the frequency of data transmission. It can be as often as every 15 minutes, or it can be um, as infrequent as once a week. The transmission start time offset um, is used in scenarios where, let's say you wanted to transmit data daily, but you didn't want that one transmission to occur until you were in the office at 9 o'clock. So you would set your transmission start time offset to 9 o'clock. The data format here would be the OT protocol binary, and in this particular case, we're using the protocol type FTT. If it was HTTP, we'd be using HTTP post or get. Um, we're looking at transmitting um, our channels. So these channels correspond to our water level readings, our temperature, um, battery voltage, signal strength, and now we're ready to go on to the next tab, which would be our operator tab, and here's where we enter in information about the SIM card. So in this particular case, we're entering in the access point name or the APN for um, AT&T, and in that case, it's ISP.singular. Um, we also have an example here for T-Mobile, and you can set the username and password here if you would like for the operator. Now moving on to the FTP, here you would set your username and your password. You would also enter in your server name and your server path and the port number and then simply save those, um, save those values. So that's um, a quick overview of a setup example using GPRS with FTP. Now I wanted to revisit the signal strength um, and just quickly go over a transmission test that's available. So signal strength is important and needed, again, to have the 10 signal strength, greater than 10 for um, GSM communication, greater than 14 for GPRS. So to um, verify what our ambient signal strength is or what the current signal strength is, we would um, select from the main Equalog menu the modem status, test SMS GPRS, and that would basically bring us to an, another screen here that um, shows us our current battery voltage, uh, shows us our signal strength, 
and um, that we're connected. So in this case, we're connected to the AT&T network. We have our phone number here, of which we're sending the um, test SMS message to. So this could be your phone number uh, while you're out in the field, and you could send the test message to your phone to see and validate that it's functioning. Uh, you can also send a test SMS, excuse me, a test message using GPRS. You'll notice here that you have the uh, wait time until sending. That's user selectable and can go all the way up to five minutes. The value of that is if you have a site that you need to close the protective housing or the well cap in order to test the, the final installation, you can allow yourself enough time to get it everything closed up before sending the test message. Wanted to also share with you the advanced operations, what we call an info file, which gives you um, a, essentially a record of all of the um, transmissions that have occurred and the data that's been logged. So in bold here, we see that we had um, sensor 0002 uh, reach an alarm limit, and it tells us that that alarm limit was greater than the threshold, which was 25 and that the recorded value was 26.6. And then 37 seconds later, we see that the um, alarm was sent and there was a set transmission was received. So this is a great um, tool for um, not only having a record of what's occurred, but also it's very useful for diagnostics as well. So I wanted to thank everybody for their time today and for um, spending this afternoon with us going over the Eco Lost 900, and we look forward to hearing any questions that you might have. Thank you so much.